Hi, I'm Dr. Shobha Badigar, consultant in pediatric hemato oncology and bone marrow transplantation in Mazumdar Shaw Cancer Center, NH City, Bangalore. Today, I would like to talk about bone marrow transplantation in children. What is bone marrow transplantation? It is also called stem cell transplantation. This is a procedure where we take healthy stem cells, also termed CD34 cells, from a donor who can also be a patient in certain procedures and transfuse it to the patient who requires this. In this process, the stem cells replace the diseased marrow of the patient, thereby giving a cure from the disease. This is a procedure done in various conditions, like malignant conditions like leukemia, lymphoma, CML, and in non-malignant conditions like thalassemia, thalassemia major, sickle cell disease, aplastic anemia, immunodeficiency disorders, and many other conditions. There are two types of bone marrow transplantations. One is allogenic and the other one is autologous. In allogenic transplantation, we take donor who is a healthy donor, who can be either a sibling or some related donor. Unfortunately, in uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent of the patients, we don't have a matched donor. In such conditions, we take an unrelated donor or one of the parent as the donor. The other type of transplantation is the autologous transplantation. Here, the patient donates his own cell for himself. And this can sound weird because bone marrow transplantation, like I said, is a curative therapy. Now, if the patient himself is diseased, how do we take his own cells? Now, in autologous bone marrow transplantation, the disease is somewhere else, like it is in a bone or it is in some other part of the body, like a nervous system, like a brain, or uh, it could be, um, you know, it's in muscle, like rhabdomyosarcoma, so many various, like lymphoma. Over here, the aim of giving the stem cell, tra stem cell transfusion is to overcome the myelosuppressive, that is a bone marrow suppression effect of the high dose chemotherapy given to the patient. And this is called autologous stem cell transplantation. Now, how does this procedure happen? First of all, we recognize the conditions that require bone marrow transplantation. Like I said, it could be malignant conditions or non-malignant conditions. And we identify the donors for this condition. The patient who is undergoing the transplantation should be fit to undergo the transplantation. The first condition is that they should be disease free. Like if it is in leukemia, they should be, uh, the bone marrow should be cleared from the leukemic cells. And if, they, if it is a neuroblastoma, then they should be at least partially in complete remission from the disease. So for each condition, there is a criteria to start the bone marrow transplantation. And we do HLA typing if it is an allogenic transplantation for the patient and the donor. If this is a kind of test which identifies who the donor can be for the patient. If this HLA typing test shows that the donor is a complete match with the patient's HLA test, then it is called a matched HLA, HLA transplantation. 20 to 30 percent of the patients do not have matched donors. For these patients, we have haplotransplantation wherein the half HLA uh, matched donor, that is one of the parent, is accepted as a donor. Before starting the HLA, uh, before the, after deciding who the donor is, we do a battery of tests on the donor as well as the patient. Why do we do this test? First, to identify the, uh, any problems that can be cured before taking up for transplant in the patient. Like for example, if there is a dental complication or if there is a thyroid complication, we rectify that before we, we take the patient up for the transplantation. And for the donor, we do, do a few tests so that we confirm that the donor is healthy enough and is not going to transmit any viral infections through their stem cell transfusion to the patient. Once we have decided who the donor is and when to do the transplantation, we uh, counsel the parents as well as the patient who, if he's an adult and explain to them the detailed procedure, the possible complications and the side effects, the duration and the cost of the treatment. The treatment can be expensive if it is an unmatched donor or a matched unrelated donor. We have various sources to help the patient financially, like we have uh, NGOs, and we have certain government schemes that can help them financially with the procedure. Once a patient has understood all these, we prepare the patient as well as the donor for the transplantation. The patient will receive a week or 10 days of treatment called high-dose chemotherapy after, after a, a surgical procedure called central line insertion or Hickman line insertion for the procedure. 
all this happens in a bone marrow transplantation unit which an ice which is an isolated room for the patient and one attender with the patient it the the isolation is to prevent infection from outside to the patient once uh, after these th this initial treatment is called conditioning regimen once the conditioning regimen is done the donor cell is taken like any other blood donation or through a surgical procedure which is called bone marrow harvest in this the donor receives uh, uh, three to four days of a simple injection called growth factor through the skin just like how insulin is, is uh, injected to the donor three to four days later or on the fourth or the fifth day we take stem cells from this donor through bone marrow harvest or peripherally uh, peripheral blood stem cell collection the procedure as such is completely harmless for the donor with no immediate or delayed side effects hence the donor need not hesitate to donate his stem cells for this noble cause once the stem cells are collected they are directly infused to the patient on the same day the patient's infusion happens through a simple procedure just like any other blood transfusion it is not a surgical procedure after the stem cells are uh, transfused to the donor to the patient the patient is daily evaluated for infections and any drug side effect and complications because of the stem cells the sum of the complications that can happen due to the procedure is mouth ulcers called mucositis vomiting nausea these are immediate side effects and sometimes they can have infections which can af affect any part of the body because now the patient has no immunity of his own and the immunity from the stem cells that are donated to him is yet to develop and the duration of the cells the stem cells to grow in the patient's body is approximately 14 to 21 days during which time there is a high risk of infection once the donor cell starts developing the infection rate starts coming down this happens at around 3 to 4 weeks of receiving the stem cells now how do we confirm whether the donor cells are growing in the patient's body one the rates of infection comes down and second the uh, blood cells starts increasing and we do a special test called chimerism the bone marrow transplantation uh, after this the patient receives a few few medications to prevent all these complications and to treat them if at all they develop depending on the uh, on the uh, indication for the bone marrow transplantation in children the cure rates can be as high as 60 to 70% in leukemia 70% in aplastic anemia and 90% in immunodeficiency disorders so all these children who are who have an indication to undergo a bone marrow transplantation need not lose hope there is a ray of hope if whether there is a donor or not there was a time when availability of donor was the main reason more main uh, uh, way of transplanting the kids but because of haplotransplantation even those children who do not have a matched donor can get cured of their disease thank you